There are two common ways of representing multivariable systems. In the first method, we use differential equations. And we take the linear differential equations that we wrote down for the system and write them in a very special form called the state space form. The standard state space form uh, looks like this, where each of the large capital letters here are matrices, the A, B, C, D, and the X, Y, and U are vectors. Now, this form can be used to represent SISO systems, as we've seen before, but if Y, in other words, the output vector, has more than one element, this generalizes very naturally to a multivariable system. So the way to think about what uh, these parts represent is that u is always seen as the input to the system, x are internal states, and y are the outputs. So the A, B, C, and D matrices con uh, completely describe this system. You will sometimes see an extra term written down in the state space uh, matrices. This is also used in the Seaborg textbook, but uh, this is not a very well supported term, um, and it doesn't actually make as much uh, sense for representations uh, when we do computer calculations. You'll see that most of the computer libraries that we use only support the four matrix form as the state space. And most people, when they say state space, they mean this uh, four matrix form. Uh, there is a more compact representation of the state space matrices. So once you start getting used to this uh, representation, it, it starts getting tedious to write down all of these equations. And so people will sometimes uh, sometimes write something like this, where we have a partitioned matrix A, B, C, and D, and they'll often uh, just represent the four matrices um, in those positions. This is useful because uh, if we consider the shapes of the matrices that they necessary, necessarily must have in order for this uh, set of equations to work out, uh, we will see that the uh, rectangles are exactly shaped the way that the um, matrices have to be shaped. So let's, let's look at that in a little bit more detail. So let's say we have n uh, outputs. So x dot is an n by 1 matrix. That means that A must necessarily be a n by n matrix in order to multiply by an n by 1 matrix. B must be uh, also have n rows, and it, ha it must have as many elements as U has rows. But U and X do not have to have the same number of rows, so I'm going to introduce a new symbol uh, for U. I'm going to leave out the uh, non-standard ED, but uh, you can see that uh, that must also have the same number of rows as X. Now let's move over to Y, imagining that Y that there are k uh, outputs, so k times 1. And again, for this to work, we have as many columns. We must have as many rows as y, as many columns as x, remembering that x is n by 1. And lastly, d must have the same number as rows as y, but the same number of columns as u. So just uh, make sure that you understand that in all of these, I've relied strongly on these inner dimensions having to be the same so that the matrices can multiply correctly. Now, if we apply those matrix shapes to this uh, block, we can see that um, A and C have the same number of uh, columns. Well, both of them have n uh, columns. B and D have the same number of columns because they have to multiply with U. They have m columns. A and B have to have the same number of rows 
as x, so they have n rows, and c and d have to have the same number of rows as y, so they have k rows. And so uh, if we uh, look at that matrix, we can easily recover the things that we've reasoned about over here. So in other words, we can see that A, if we look here, must have N rows and N columns, as we saw there. B must have N rows and M columns, as we saw over there, and so on. And so this uh, stacked format also reminds you how the matrices have to share dimensions. Two important things to note about this form are that the state space form only works in deviation variables, so we can clearly see there's no constant term uh, in either of these expressions, and so there's no way for y uh, to be anything other than zero um, if x is zero. And so there's, there's within this form uh, an implication that we're working within um, deviation variables. Further, there's no way to accommodate delays. So um, none of these equations uh, contain any other reference to time than the current time. So we could, if we were feeling uh, pedantic, we could write in um, a time reference in each one of these variables. And uh, you'll see that they are all referring to the current time, not to any other previous time. And so there's no way for us to accommodate lags uh, or time delays. This difficulty with accommodating time delays and also all of the knowledge that we have about analyzing systems in transfer function form uh, means that in many cases we will prefer the um, generalization of transfer functions to multivariable systems. Now the way that this is done can easily be generalized by writing two inputs. So I'm going to write u1 and u2, and I'm going to try to calculate a combined effect on y1 and y2. The effects of the two inputs on y1 will always be added together for linear systems, and we have a direct uh, forward section uh, for u1 on y1 and we have a block for the effect of u2 on y1 and as I said these would just be added together. Now we're going to uh, use some nomenclature here uh, so we'll uh, use subscripts to indicate that the effect of u1 on y1 uh, will be subscript 1, 1, and the effect of u2 will be using the convention of having the output first and the input second. And we'll see why in a, in a moment. Now, um, so that completely defines the input effect on y1. But of course, there are also effects on y2. Uh, we're going to follow uh, the same kind of approach where we again have two transfer functions, the one being associated with uh, u2 and the other one coming in here from y1 and following the same uh, conventions for the transfer functions here, we'll say that this is uh, the effect on y2 from y1, and this is the effect on y2 from y2. So that's the full network, and we can see that uh, without any particular uh, conventions uh, other than the one, two, uh, and to one convention that we've used in the subscripts over here. Uh, this is uh, how you would have normally drawn this uh, multivariable system anyway. So if we write down the associated uh, equations, the equations that are associated with this um, block diagram, 
of y1 is equal to g11 times u1 plus g12 times u2 oh. and we have y2 is equal to uh, g21 times u1 plus g22 times u2. And if you look closely, it's clear that uh, these coefficients can be stacked into a matrix in order to obtain exactly the same uh, matrix formula form that we have here. So uh, if we stack y1 and y2 into a matrix y, we'll end up with a matrix equation y is equal to g11, g12, G21, G22, and now hopefully those subscripts make sense. And we have our U1 and U2 as a vector over here. This is what that uh, input uh, output vector looks like Y1, Y2. And so, quite naturally, the multivariable form that we've sketched here. Uh, takes the form of a transfer function matrix. And so we'll end up writing this as uh, y is equal to gu. Now we're always um, stuck with a bit of a puzzle when we write vectors and matrices in uh, transfer or in a written form like this. I quite like the convention of emphasizing the si shape of a matrix by saying that we have one line under vectors and two lines under matrices. Uh, but there are a variety of different conventions for this. The benefit of the transfer function matrix form is that all of the kinds of transfer function matrices that we've used, or the transfer functions that we've used up to now, including daytime, can be accommodated in this form. It's slightly harder to accommodate uh, using computer calculations, so the state space form makes uh, simulation of systems very easy uh, but the transfer function form makes analytic manipulation very easy especially if you have systems with uh, delays now uh, it's relatively straightforward to convert between numeric versions of these uh, representations using computer uh, libraries uh, for uh, it's actually a little bit uh, challenging to convert transfer functions, uh, transfer function matrices to state space form by hand. Um, it is relatively easy to do if you have very small matrices, but the challenge is that uh, keeping track of all the various equations becomes quite hard. Um, going from uh, state space to the transfer function uh, is very easy though, uh, because it involves just calculating the Laplace transform of these uh, two equations um, and that's easy enough to do so that you can uh, I basically don't even remember the formula I always just have to calculate it by hand so the first uh, the derivative formula just becomes uh, Sx and uh, that is equal to Ax plus Bu I'm following the convention of also making the uh, input and output vectors capital when I Laplace transform them um, and the output equations become Cx plus Du. And so now it, uh, it is a simple matter of substituting uh, these equations into one another. So the first step is to uh, to take this equation and solve it uh, for x which uh, involves writing it uh, in this form so is x minus a x equals b u and now we just have to remember that all of these things are matrices so you end up with si 
minus a times s equals b u and you have to multiply by the inverse from the left to get to the uh, x by itself so s i minus a inverse b u and of course now we can take that and substitute it in there which uh, is easy enough we can simply uh, write that last equation is equal to c s i minus a inverse b u and we still have our plus du and then obviously we can just collect all of those things and find our transfer function fully so that's c s i minus a inverse b plus d so that's the transfer function that relates our and so that would be is equal to g u and so there we have it a uh, very simple conversion the one way uh, i will not expect you to convert the other way uh, for uh, except for incredibly system uh, simple systems um, for mimo systems